All right, welcome back. I'm now working on the fifth commit in our application if you're following along with Git. And what we're gonna do in this video is configure Webpack or at least set up the config file and replicate what it's already doing. But we're gonna add a couple of other settings to change the output. So we're gonna begin by just talking about what it's doing for us right now. So we've, we've already seen this. The default place it's looking for an entry point is index.js instead of source. I didn't tell it to do that. The only thing I told it to do is just run Webpack. When I run npm start, it just says, all right, Webpack, do your thing. Webpack says, oh, there's no config. I'm gonna look for index.js instead of source. We didn't have it there a couple videos ago and it gave us an error. And the other thing it's doing is it's putting the code in a directory called dist in a main.js file. I didn't say it should do that either. That's the default behavior. So if we want to change that, or in our case, if we wanna add on other things, like we're gonna talk about plugins and loaders throughout the rest of the course, uh, we have to have a config file to do that. Eventually we'll actually have one config file for development, one for production, but I'm just gonna make a file. I can call this whatever I want. I'm gonna call it webpack.config.js. And then there's a couple of, of weird things that we have to get out of the way. The syntax for these files looks like this. So we're going to export an object and it's going to have a couple of properties. We're going to add an entry point, which I'll leave as an empty string for now. We're going to have an output, which will be an object. And we'll start with these two. So our entry point, if we're just recreating what we already have, it's dot slash source slash index dot JS. So not doing anything new for us, but we're explicitly telling it to do this now because it will allow us to, in addition, add some other functionality down here, which we don't have right now. Now, where do we want it to output it? Well, the first thing that we can configure is the file name, not fill name, file name. If we wanted, we can keep it as main.js. We could go with, um, I don't know, hello.js, just to show you that it works. And then the trickiest part is we have to tell it where to go where to actually spit that code out. And to do it, we're going to import a module from Node that we get. We don't have to install this. It just comes with Node. It's called path. Const path equals require path. And what we do is write path.resolve, double underscore dear name, directory name, and then the name of the folder that we want the code to go in. So in my case, I'll do dist. But to show you, you may not want to type this because you're going to make an extra directory, but just to prove my point, I'll just call this code like that. Oh, and I'm missing my equal sign up here. Okay, no wonder my, my editor was yelling at me. So we have file name, hello.js, path is path.resolve. So what is this all doing? What is path.resolve? Well, what this is going to do is resolve an absolute path to this code directory. So it's gonna take whatever the current directory is. So if I'm running this on my machine, this path will be something like slash cult, or I think I'm actually using a different account called recording user slash uh, documents slash wherever all my stuff is slash code. But then if someone else is running it on their machine, we don't wanna put this recording user hard-coded hard -coded in there as the path for the output. So we can use path.resolve, which will take the current directory name, dear name, which every node script has automatically loaded by default. Anyway, this is just a long way of saying we wanna make a file called hello.js inside of a file or a directory called code. So the last step, if we wanna use this configuration is to tell Webpack to use it. So right here in our package.json, we can pass, it, pass in dash dash config and then the name of the file, webpack.config.js. Okay. So I mentioned you may not want to actually run this uh, if you don't have this set up as dist and main.js because it's going to make you a new folder and a new file, and I'm just going to delete mine right after. But let me show you that it works. Fingers crossed that it does work. Let's see what happens. All right, we have a new folder and a file called hello.js. So that is coming from Webpack. It's not doing anything with dist anymore. Uh, we could delete that, but instead I'm going to delete my code directory. So let's do that now, rm-rf, code. Okay, that file's gone. I'm gonna change this back to main.js and change this to be dist. And that's what most people will do. Or you could have the folder call, be called build instead, but there's a lot of options, but code is probably not the best example. 
So the next thing we can do, just to show you why you would even do this, if we're just recreating what we already had, why go through this effort? Well, we're gonna spend a lot of time adding in different plugins and loaders and having Webpack handle different types of files. But for now, remember how I said all of this is minified and ugly and hard to understand? What's happening is that it's running in production mode by default. And I can tell it, let's not do production. Let's set mode to be development. And that mode is going to tell it to stop minifying. So now if I rerun my code, or if I rerun Webpack, inside of dist, we have a main.js, and it's no longer all scrunched up into this really hard to read thing of code. Now, usually you're not gonna read this anyway. That's not the point. You read your code in the files where you're writing it, but then Webpack spits out a bundle. But just to show you what it looks like, you can see all of it here. Now, one thing that's kind of annoying, I don't know if you can see this, it's using eval all over the place. This is another thing that it's being configured by uh, Webpack automatically. If we wanna change that, it's not really a performance issue, but just for understanding what's going on, we can add another thing called dev tool. And if we set dev tool to none, and I always forget it's a lowercase t, if I rerun it this time, again, this is not something you need to do. But if I look at the code now, you can see that all of our code is in here relatively unchanged. We don't have that weird eval stuff going on. So this allows us to actually understand what this file is doing. So the very top of it is some Webpack stuff that has to do with defining uh, different functions to make a Webpack module. There's one called Webpack require. So if we look at the code that's added in further down, for example, if we look at alert service, let's look at the file. Alert service has this class, as we've seen, and it exports that class, but it also imports inputs are valid. But let's look at what Webpack put in the file. If we go to our, oh, I guess I closed it, our main.js, we can see that it says exports provided alert service, and it wraps the entire thing in this function to create a Webpack module, all of this right here. It ends right there. But then inside of it, we don't actually have our import anymore. I don't see that line that we had at the top of alert service that said import inputs are valid. This is gone and it's been replaced instead with some webpack magic where we have webpack require. See right here, webpack require source app utils inputs are valid. So webpack is now taking control and this webpack require is making sure that our code is all loaded in the correct order. It, it's managing what depends on what. So it's basically using this as a hook, seeing this here and realizing, well, it's not realizing something, but it has logic that is making sure that it's doing its own Webpack version of requiring that module. So if we keep scrolling down, we can see, you know, for other things like app.js, app.js depends on parse inputs. So it's requiring it with Webpack require and inputs are valid, Webpack require. And we can keep going and you'll see that all of our code is in here. It's been added in and slightly modified to use Webpack require to be wrapped inside of a Webpack module. And a lot of that, or all of that logic is coming from here. Okay, so I'm gonna go and undo or delete the dev tool none. We'll come back to that later. We'll talk about source maps, but I'm gonna leave mode at development for now. So we're gonna end here actually. Uh, we haven't really configured very much. We've just seen how to recreate what we were getting already. Although we did add in mode development, but in the next video, that's all gonna change because we're gonna start talking about loaders. How do we handle different types of files that aren't just JavaScript? So that's coming up next. We're gonna to have to edit our config file. So I'm gonna commit right now. Uh, if you wanna just see this code, it is the fifth commit. If you enjoyed this video, my cat and I really appreciate it. If you share it with anyone you think would get something out of it, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, please, turn on notifications. Oh, so annoying asking you to do that. Anyway, uh, have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks.